I don't have time right now. Rocket? No. Rebel? No. Racer? Yes. I don't have time right now, Racer. I'm writing, directing, editing, shooting, rendering, composing, and providing the catering for Spy Kids 4. Do you even have a crew anymore? Yeah, he's over there. Hi, Racer. Now go play with your other siblings who have radical R names. But Dad, it's my birthday! And that's why I'm making this movie for you! Huh? Really? Spy Kids 4 was just a lie to trick ya. I'm actually making a movie based on all the characters that you created. You know the ones I'm talking about. Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Shark Boy and Lava Girl, that's right. And all the crazy adventures they go on. Oh, I haven't thought of any adventures for them yet. What'd you dream last night? Oh, Mom said I shouldn't dream that anymore. What else did you dream last milk night? Milk and Cookies! The land of milk and cookies is where it takes place. And I will give you full credit at the beginning of the film so everybody knows it was your idea. Wait, doesn't that just give you an easy out if the movie's bad? I prefer to see it as the greeting card before you open your gift. Now off you go, Daddy has to get some inspiration. Oh, are you gonna play your tiny paper flute? What can I say? I just write so much better with it. Now off you go! Oh. Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> In many respects, Robert Rodriguez is a filmmaker's filmmaker. He started off with no money but made up for it by incorporating what little he had into a unique and clever style. He saved on crew by doing most of the work himself. Directing, editing, writing, composing, special effects. He's cheap, quick, and best of all, cool. It's pretty hard not to be impressed with the guy. But not surprisingly, sometimes the fast-paced cheapness can backfire, particularly with his children's films. While the first Spy Kids was a big hit with both audiences and critics, they seemed to get more and more childish and gimmicky as they went on. But it's not the Spy Kids movies that people remember being the most outlandishly strange and fucked up. That distinction goes to The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. This is a film that actually starts off by saying it was inspired by the stories and dreams of one of his kids. A charming gesture on, say, a behind-the-scenes featurette. But when you have to put that before your movie, almost like you're trying to already set the curve pretty low, well, let's just hope the family enjoys it, because for the rest of us, um, let's just hope the family enjoys it. Let's take a look at Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <sighs> okay. Filmmakers, as well as the internet in general, word of advice. If you put quotes around something and then a name after it, it surprisingly doesn't automatically make it important. You can do it with anything, really. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Sir Mix a lot. I spark! Jar Jar Banks. I made doo doo in my britches. George Washington. When he was two fucking years old! Not very heavy when you really think about it. We start with the backstory of Shark Boy, as I have to admit, it's actually kind of funny and creative. He was a marine biologist, or at least in training. But one day, an incredible, mysterious storm appeared. Oh, shit, this is just exposition for Sharknado 4! Quick, hide all your terror reeds! Shark Boy and his father survived, but they survived on different sides of the wreckage, each floating off in a different direction. Shark Boy was completely alone. Yeah, he looks really torn up about it. Ah, I should have gotten his adult password for Netflix. The sharks take him in as one of their own. He grows gills, as most growing boys do. And he comes across our main character, Max, who decides to take him home. Then one night, I was visited by a glowing light. An amazing girl with purple flames for hair and skin of molten lava rock appeared. I called her Lava Girl. Uh, actually, it's Amanda. Lava Girl. Why do you feel like you need to name me? Lava Girl. Does Rodriguez always name kids after things? Lava Girl. Okay, fine. Lava Girl. Jesus. She says she has to take Shark Boy to Planet Drool, and that's the last he's ever seen of him. Not surprisingly, everyone doesn't believe his story, including his teacher, played by George Lopez. How many people think Max's story is true? Have a seat, Max. I have five failed sitcoms to get to. But a bunch of Disney Channel villains tried to take his dream journal. You know, that device that every kid in movies has, but you never actually met somebody who has one. And Max tries to run away. Get the book! Oh my god, this kid is so confident in his master evilry, he just has to point at his minions understand? In fact, why the hell does he even have minions? He's fucking eight! 
I'll bring you a revised edition tomorrow. Now don't worry, I'm sure it'll be better than what this story is turning out so far. But Max finds out more and more how few people actually believe him. Yo, Shark Bite Love Girl! Look, this one has shark bites, and this one is singed! There's no such thing as Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Well, I believe him. But I also believe my penis is my 11th toe, so I might not be the best person to ask. Stupid logs. Please don't let me have to go to school. They'll make fun of me, I know it. Please, Top Bunk, which seeing how I have no other siblings, I'm not sure why is here. Seriously, who's up there? Tom Hanks from Big? Linus took my journal! Give Max back his journal. After the teacher forces Linus to give back Max's dream journal, Max sees that it's ruined, leading to one of my favorite deliveries from Linus. He ruined my dream journal! I did not! Mr. Electric, send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! <laughs> okay, this kid's training to be a Spider-Man villain. I mean, who talks this way? Send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! Then it'll be my turn to look after Mr. Flappy the Hamster for the school weekend! <laughs> But Mr. Lopez says, hey, I can act even fucking sillier than that. I know everything, and you know nothing. At the end of class, both of you report to the principal's office with your parents. Somebody give me direction, as I have no idea what I am doing with your parents. But suddenly, Shark Boy and Lava Girl bust in. If you want to stop the darkness from destroying our worlds, Come with us. You better go with him. Jesus, is this guy trying to get worst teacher of the year? Go with the two strangers towards the killer tornado. I'm just going to stay here and teach everybody how they'll never need geometry. I can't believe I'm finally getting the ditch this place and go to play the drool. By the way, that's Taylor Dooley as Lava Girl, and guess who as Shark Boy? Having trouble? Well, just imagine him with his shirt off. That's right, that little kid is Jacob from Twilight. By God, I never thought I would need it again, but the time has come. I thought I put you away forever. You are needed once more. You will be most useful, my friend. Then get aboard a shark spaceship and get ready to launch. Blue goggles for the boys, pink for the girls. Do you have another pair of boy goggles? Uh-uh. Then why would you say pink is for girls? And why is there only one pair of boy goggles? And why would you have that selection to begin with? This mission's already bullshit! They take off to Planet Drool, but is it me or do they look more like they landed on Planet Food Fight? Oh boy, I do hope there's a stereotypes and sex innuendo part of the planet. Recognize your dream world, Max? Not really. Jesus, it's like somebody melted the Teletubbies. Which I would like this movie a lot more if that was the story. But nope, this is where all of Max's dreams go, and it's being taken over by something called the darkness. The darkness! Run! And if you think this is the closest thing to mocking the never-ending story, remember, the never-ending story did it pretty well on its own. Kids aren't allowed to rest, because if they rest, they sleep. And if they dream, it takes power away from Mr. Electric. Hey, come on, I can't green screen like you can. So they tried to save some kids from a roller coaster that won't stop, and you know what? I just figured out why this movie looks more gimmicky than it does creative. The whole thing, I mean the whole thing looks like one giant extreme 90s commercial. Think about it, can't you see it advertising something? Whoa! Ride the roller coaster of flavor with Capri Sun! Hey, ever ridden in a dream jelly bean! Well now you can with extremely bellies! Hey, ever go through a door that looks like a penis and testicles? Hey. I completely forgot what we were selling. So they come across one of the villains named Mr. Electric, played again by George Lopez. No school, no discipline, no rules. And most important, no dreams. 
<laughs> now that's the face of an invested hero. I'm flying, who cares? Bye, <laughs> Mr. Possession Head, with my bucket of hell! <laughs> hey, this looks like fun! Where do I put the quarter in? What, I can't play it? I just assumed this was all a cutscene for a McDonald's online game or something. You mean we're supposed to take this story seriously? I was just watching to get an Egg McMuffin coupon at the end! So he captures them and sends them on their way to the Graveyard of Dreams, where... <sighs> Did I mention this was in 3D? You know, sometimes that can be a good thing. Like flying through the skies and how to train your dragon. Or experiencing breathtaking worlds in Avatar. But then every once in a while you get the YouTube poop of 3D. Where every so often they just go, Fuck you, we're 3D! Fuck you, we're 3D! Can you see this in 3D? Can you see this in 3D, you fucking little dick horse? Close your eyes and dream. If Max can't remember his dreams, maybe he can redream them. He can dream us out of here. Dream Max. I would love you if you never do that smile again. I know you got a lot to figure out, but if you happen to dream about who I am, and how I fit into this world? Please dream up a plot for me. The writers forgot to give me one. They come across a robot that Max dreamed up, who they hope will have some answers. Tobor, away! Yes? We can ask him anything now. Let me, let me! Tell me something about me. I'm clueless. Your joke, sir. Oh, thank you so much, Bernard. Oh, look at that. Silver platter and everything. You made it impossible for me to ignore this. My pleasure, sir. <clears throat> Not as clueless as your agent! <laughs> yeah, fucking 3D! Fucking 3D! Bernard. Fucking 3D! Fucking 3D! So the robot tells them to go to the land of milk and cookies, which I think is the holy land for Moses Jr., where they come across the train of thought. That's the train of thought? How do I keep it on track? Well, if we knew that, we'd be in a much better movie, wouldn't we? Sorry I forgot about you, Tobor. Are you kidding? You just saved me. I'm free. God, even the magical robot sounds disinterested. I'm free. I'm going to go visit my children. Look, kids, I'm home. Yay! by all the brains this movie killed, they realize that the locomotive is out of control. Jump! It'll be all right! And that was the end of Lava Girl. We never knew that much about her, but we never wanted to anyway. And that was the end of Shark Boy. At least he won't imprint on any newborn babies anytime soon. Can we go now? They end up in literally a half-baked Mario Kart level, but it looks like they're not out of the woods yet. Just given up! Okay, so the parents are in this dream too. Well, good. This could give some very visual insight into Max's feelings towards them. Those giants almost look like my parents. They seem happy together. Is that your dream? We had to dream of family. It hasn't been coming true lately. Most dreams don't come true on their own. You have to make them true. It takes a lot of work. Not easy. <sighs> okay. Wow, I never thought I would have to say this in a Robert Rodriguez movie, but show, don't tell. That's the idea of film. In Where the Wild Things Are, the monsters represent the boys' insecurities. Even in Bridge to Terabithia, the shadow catching up to our lead shows us his fear of confronting death. Here, the parents attack him for no reason and leave. They have no character, they don't even have any lines, and everything that's said here could just be said in the real world. So the sequence was practically pointless. In a visual medium like this, we gain nothing. How would you like it if in The Wizard of Oz, the character is just explained rather than expressed? And as for you, my fine lady, it's true, I can't attend you here and now as I'd like. 
but just try to stay out of my way. Well, she certainly seems like a representation of abandonment issues you're feeling for Toto, as well as your fears of limited mortality not allowing you to see as much of the world as your short time span allows. So they tell Max that he needs to dream in order to stop the land from being consumed by the darkness. All right, Max. You've had your cookies and milk. Now go to sleep. Yeah, we filled you up with sugar, little boy. Now sleep. Close your eyes, shut your mouth, dream a dream and get us out. Dream, 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 dream. It's working! Keep it up, shark boy! Just relax, lay Fuck. Or my fist will put you out. Yeah, lullabies always work great with an aggressive hip-hop beat. Hell, why stop there? Why not just go into straight gangster rap? Get us out of this ditch, go to sleep, you fucking bitch! Dream your motherfucking dream! Go to sleep really quick, or I'll Julie in your dick! Dream your motherfucking dream! Eh, yeah, that ain't working. Let me try a bedtime story. Go the fuck to sleep! <laughs> But Mr. Electric starts to approach and they need to wake him up. Power! Cry static and let's slip the plugs of war! <laughs> Jesus Christ, kid, you're fucking Shark Boy, not William Wallace! What, are you making up for how little you're gonna kick ass in New Moon? Oh, I've missed you. Mm. Hot lava. What the hell? Where's Lava Girl? What the hell? It's up to you now, Max. We believe in you, Max. What the hell? You know, General Patton used to say you'll gain strength when you look into a pile of goo that's a best friend's face. Well, I'm looking into a pile of goo that's a best friend's face, and I'm scared fucking shitless of it! What the fuck is this movie?! It's a banana split boat! So they try to make their way to a banana split, split boat, but Lava Girl loses her leg. Brought to you for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have seen the direction on that one. Just act like you don't know what you're supposed to be doing and nobody is helping you at all. Oh yeah, visual dead air. They tell Max that apparently he's getting better at mastering the next stage, daydreaming. This is great, Max. You're starting to daydream. Keep that up, and they'll never get us. Much like the audience, pay no attention to what's going on and imagine something better. He dreams a crystal heart that can be found in the Kingdom of Ice. You can almost feel the electricity in the air. But they get intercepted by Mr. Electric, and they're taken to who's behind all the darkness. I'm much cooler. I... A minus. Wow, it's like Eddie Munster impregnated Emperor Zerg. Where is my father? Hmm. Check the bottom of the ocean. I'm not gonna lie, I think this kid has been waiting all his life to play this part. I mean, just watch him in this performance. And Lava Girl. Once I figure out how to freeze this planet's core, all of your powers will disappear. This kid is giving Joffrey a run for his money. He's fucking amazing. I'm just trying to imagine this obvious James Bond villain trying to cope in a fourth grade environment. You thought you could escape fear by running away to dreamland, but fear exists in the one place you can never escape. Your mind. Oh yes, you may think you have won at guess who, but let me ask you this. Does your person have brown hair? Robert. He puts him in a cage when, I don't know, these weird things pop up. The song is driving me crazy. Sing louder. Sing higher. So they got free because of narwhals? Narwhals, narwhals, swimming in the ocean. To be fair, I'd go nuts if I had to hear that song again too. So they get back the dream journal, and Shark Boy is able to find out what happened to his father. Your father really is at the bottom of the ocean. He's in a submarine, looking for you! Okay, for the record, 
dick delivery, all right? It says here that he crashed on the bed because he was so tired. But then apparently he died of exhaustion because he's working so hard. But then a squid ripped off his head, ate his body, and has been digesting it for weeks. Is what he would call his memoirs if a squid ripped off his head, ate his body, has been digesting <laughs> I'm sorry, I focus on weird details. So they go back to the ice castle to see the princess of ice. Let it blow, let it blow. At least I don't have penis hair. She gives him the crystal heart to help them on their mission, but Mr. Electric shocks Shark Boy unconscious. So Lava Girl has to go save him, even though the water will kill her in the process. Come on, Shark Boy! My last request is to put a bullshit quote from me at the beginning of the film. But creepy as shit face comes back and tells him she needs to be thrown into the volcano to save her. I'll go. I'm stronger and faster. <laughs> Hey, at least you're unconscious. I've had to carry a girl just to make some cougar's horny fantasy come to life. I think that's enough for now, but you will be missed, old friend. Oh my god, that killed her. I don't know why I thought that would work. I'm a terrible person! It, of course, brings her back to life is good, as a healthy dose of scenery seems to be next on the menu. How'd you get in here? <laughs> Hate to burst your bubble, Dream Boy, but I read your book. Hate to burst your bubble, but the marbles on my side of the Hungry Hungry Hippos are more than the marbles on your side of the Hungry Hungry Hippos! So it's a showdown between Linus's nightmares and Max's pussy dreams. Brainstorm. What was that supposed to stick to? Brain... Fart. Hi, this is you 20 minutes from now? Um, you need to get out. What are you talking about? Just Shark Boy and Lava Girl. No, you don't understand. You will not be able to sleep for a year! Come on, I survived Son of the Mask and Food Fight. Those had a ton of scary scenes in it. What it lacks in quantity, it makes up for in magnitude. Look, if you're there, obviously I did it. I'm not even sure how we're really doing this right now. Okay. Okay, but I want you to write I'm sorry on a piece of paper and stick it under the desk. Why? Because I deserve an apology from someone! <laughs> so after- oh god, fucking that scene. Shark Boy defeats Mr. Electric. <laughs> Wait, I'm electricity and water. Shouldn't this kill you? I really am a bad teacher. Meanwhile, Linus, really with the most minimal effort, is convinced to be good again. No, really, this is all it took. We can create a better dream than this. A better world. What do you say? God, I wish all villains were this easy to win over. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Hey, knock it off. Oh, okay. Let's get some clipper teenies. Sure. I am king of the ocean. Thanks for saving me. Well, technically you saved him first, but fuck it, the chick saving the dude never counts in movies. Everything will return to being the way it was. You will be able to travel to Earth and back again as you wish. You can search for your father. You can rule Earth's lava world. Oh, he's such a bad actor when he's not evil. I mean, a less fun kind of bad. He's headed to Earth. He's going to try and destroy you in your sleep. Oh my god, go back to waving your cape or something! Just keep your head the same size. When he gets back to Earth, he finds it's still under a tornado attack, and this time it's caused by Mr. Electric. On top of that, Max's parents get dragged in too. Bye, Max! <laughs> 
you wanted me to leave. No, I don't. You're my best friend. Wow, this is the most disinterested couple getting sucked into a tornado ever. Ah. Even her scream kind of sounds half-assed. Ah. Don't forget to take out the garbage. But Lava Girl saves her as Max figures out that the teacher's daughter, being the only one who believed Max to begin with, is the only one to stop the evil. Do you know what to do? I believe so. I'm gonna do what I always dreamed. Kill my dad. She saves the day as everything seems to be okay now. In fact, a little too okay. So dream a better dream. Then work to make it real. So remember kids, if your parents are getting a divorce, just dream really, really, really hard and eventually they'll get back together. It always works. And that was Shark Boy and Lava Girl, a nice gift from a good father, but a lousy movie from a great director. I'll give it credit for some of its creativity, and again, it's kind of hard to be angry at someone who basically made this movie for his kids, but the cheapness of the story and the effects don't work to the film's advantage like his other ones. In Sin City, the cheapness is stylized and gives a unique look. In this, the cheapness is too similar to so many other bad films that obviously didn't try. So this just looks like another one of those bad films. Aside from one or two entertaining performances, most of the acting is really wooden or just flat out awkward. A noble idea, but sadly, a failed delivery. So Racer, what'd you think of your birthday gift? I got you a car too. <gasps> yeah! Woo! Ungrateful little shit. <sighs> We believe in you, Max.